in the air, Badge and Sats here with you tonight. Big uh, big weekend of sport it was and uh, a huge round in uh, the NRL in particular, Sats, of course, because all the teams are based up north and uh, we think we're going to have that for a fair while. Uh, how are you, mate? Did you did you enjoy the footy? Love the footy over the weekend and um, I suppose it's, it's, it's great for if you're a South East Queensland fan. Um, able to, to go as many games as possible to support your side, of course. Uh, crowds are still allowed in, in Queensland. And uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Badge, what I really did like is uh, I, I love seeing the double headers. I don't know whether it's something we can, we can use throughout a, a regular season when everything gets back to normality because it's difficult to obviously mm. juggle who gets the gate and, and financially who's the one that prospers out of that. But outside of that, I thought it was um, – yeah, really enjoyable. You like the double a lot of the, header? Yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the fans get to buy one ticket for both games. I, yeah, I, I reckon I see one game and I'm kind of going, that's enough for me. But some people can sit through a couple in a row. I guess it's like sitting in front of your telly for a while, but mm. you're, you're at the game. Um, what do you think? Just uh, You can let us know. The text line is open as always, 0477 736 736, uh, the double headers. Uh, how much fun were they? Uh, we're going to have our Kia Top 7 tonight. Uh, Ricky Stewart. The, uh, the Raiders coach is going to join us soon from the Gold Coast bubble. Yeah, you know, I'm really interested to ask Ricky um, surrounding, well, they're on the Gold Coast and they're there with another f- three or four other clubs in the in the same hotel. I want to know whether the players are allowed to fraternise with each other or are they kept in their own quarters? Yeah, I would have thought their own yeah. space, but um, not so sure on that one. Uh, Joel and Fletch, uh, of course, will, uh, will chime in as well. That's always... Uh, Good value. Uh, did I mention the Kia Top 7? It's uh, – what's the barbecue sauce? What's the – It's disgusting. It's an out- – okay, boys. Hello, hey, Woogie. Woogie. I went to the Swans. Did you just write, try to type that in there? Yeah, i not finished. I'm doing 100 things. I'm so busy tonight, oh, boys. Um, no, we I went to, the, went to the Swans GW, GWS last night. There's about 1,500 of us, mm-hmm. about 1,498 going for the Swans, two GWS supporters, and a bloke sitting next to me put barbecue sauce on a pie – it's a national outrage. No, it's a it, meat pie. It's the only way yeah. you can eat a meat pie. No, mate. No, sauce. no, you don't, mate. You do. No, what it's tomato sauce. Okay, yeah. can I ask you well, something? I think I'm with you on that one, Woogie. If you're using tomato sauce bottle, not a bottle, but you know the the ones in shops where it's got the little nozzle on the end, the long nozzle. Yeah, the bottle. Do you, do you squeeze it on top, or do you push the the nozzle into the pie and squeeze it into the pie. On top. I, I open the lid of the pie up. Oh, you would. You're such a nerd. <laughs> What's wrong He'd with that? He'd cut it neatly too, yeah. wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, God, they haven't there wouldn't be made a this crumb anywhere. No, What's barbecue no. sauce for, Woogie, if it's not for a pie? What, on, your, on your sausage rolls or your... No, to, uh, barbecue sauce on all that stuff and you put gravy on a pie when you're having like a, a formal meal when it's got mashed potatoes and peas. Then you put gravy over the top. What about a pie with potato and peas? How, I haven't had one of inside those Inside or beside? On Never. top. It, the, it, yeah, love it. Inside. Can I say, can I tell yes. you, get ready for this, Oprah, I've never <laughs> had a pie with peas. What? Exactly. There's, and, you know, there are, there are special pie, special peas you have in pies. If you go to a pie shop and you have a pie with peas, as I <laughs> say, can I pie with peas, please? They've got to be the special light green coloured mushy ones. The ones you make not pan ham soup with. the dark with. green it... ones that don't mush up. I was yeah. going to say, is there a different yes. coloured pea? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. The, pea, the ones you make pea. pan ham soup with because they mush. If someone could tell us what those <laughs> peas are called. <laughs> Both of you are peanuts. That would be, be great. <laughs> they're called peas. Zero four double seven seven three six seven. No, the special one, well, they're, they're a different type yeah, of pea. You've got to wash them as well before you yeah. oh, the wonderful seven, three, peas. Six, seven, you usually wash all your veggies before you Let's skip to this. Sports Day, Sports Update. People are hearing us, Woogie. We're good now? I'm playing good? that now, mate. Okay, mm. that's good. Um, yeah, a bit happened across the weekend, um, including some great footy. We're going to get to our Kia Top 7 soon and some other uh, excellent sport. Uh, one of the big news stories was the signing of uh, Gus Gould, leaving the Warriors to go to the Bulldogs in uh, – what's it? What's the – Role sats is it general uh, manager of general manager rugby league, okay. which rugby is the league. role that he had at the Penrith Panthers as well. And yeah, you know, there are some quarters that are saying, "Hang on a sec, he had a contract at the Warriors," and he's explained why that couldn't continue because with COVID, it was pretty tough for him. He was approached a, a while ago where by the uh, the board, the, the Bulldogs board, and he knocked that back, and because uh, he had a obviously a continued job that he was doing, and then he was offered the uh, the Warriors job, and he was still in that role when offered again. By the Bulldogs, and because of COVID, uh, has I suppose minimised his face-to-face contact with coaches and mm. 
recruitment and retention committees and, and all the development pathway staffing. He just felt as though that uh, he wasn't giving his best to the Warriors and was a- unable to give his best to the Warriors. They they came to a uh, – Cameron George and their owner came to a, an agreement that uh, might be best that, that they go their separate Part ways. Life. Yeah. Well, he's got good form of the Bulldogs, 88 grand final winning coach. Badge, from memory oh. – I'll have to check this up. I think he was only 28 or 30 years of age when he was the coach was he of the Bulldogs. Pretty young? I don't think we'll ever see it again, a young coach that young. Wouldn't have been that young, would he? That it would, would make him it was, it was 60. A, it, was a, uh, it was a ridiculous age that he was when he coached. I'm going to Google while we keep talking. Well, he might be. Go okay. to the Googles. But, um, uh, and, of course, and then and recent, more recently his time with the Panthers, and aren't they in a great position yeah. now? And I guess Phil Gould had well, Gus had a little bit of He was 20, uh, 30. He was 30. He was 30. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's. I think it's a really good appointment, and it's. I like the idea that I wouldn't mind talking to Fletch about this. He knows a fair bit about Gus, you know, being at the Roosters as well, and the way that he operates. But uh, I, I like that he's a bit of a gun for hire because he's the good thing about Gus, and we saw it during the ARL and Super League War in ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven. He has got the game at heart. He's got the best interests of the game, and his ability to, I suppose, have a vision for the overall growth of the game and what his speciality is aside from being an amazing coach is his ability to uh, to put together the pathway development programs your 14 15 16 year olds identifying them and putting them on a on a path to to the NRL he did that at the Penrith Panthers along with mm. some other very good staff as well at the Panthers a lot of people say hang on a sec he had a 5 year plan and it didn't work well they're reaping the rewards of they sure of the are. recalibration that he was able to put in place along with these very good staff that's at the a, Panthers. I've got that's no doubt the perfect the word for it, Sats. Good. That's the word of the week. Recalibration. recalibration. And it's perfect for what happened there at the Panthers. And it's, it's exactly what happened needs to happen at the Bulldogs. Is it, what will they do at the Dogs? Well, they'll... They'll recalibrate. Rejuvenate. Reju- <laughs> what? Oh, he's got another one. Rejuvenate. Um, what, what do you think would be Trent Barrett's thoughts around this? Would, would, I reckon it could go two ways, is it? Oh, this is great. Thank you very much. I've, I need just a bit more help and guidance here with what I'm trying to achieve or not so sure about how I'm going to get on with Gus and he has sacked a coach in the past in Anthony Griffin and, gee, this could be tricky. Ivan Cleary. Ivan Cleary, yeah. Do you know what? If I was Trent Barrett and Trent Barrett's a smart man, I would be embracing Phil Gould as much as I can. I would swallow my pride. Well, it's I not would... like he's been, you know, he has a choice in it. It's happening, isn't it? Exactly. Gus is going there. Yeah. I, I would be trying to use Phil Gould to my advantage as much as possible when it comes to coaching, uh, the, ma- the the managing of players as yep. well in relation to each each individual. Um, I would be trying to sap as much information out of him as possible, what made him successful as a coach. And so I think it's – I think – and he knows – You'd think he'd know a fair bit about Trent Barrett when Trent Barrett was at the Panthers as well. Yes. So yep. don't know what the relationship is like. Uh, coach him at origin level. I would think they'd have some sort of relationship. But if I'm Trent, I'm embracing it. I We spoke to Kevy Walters last week, and I could just hear the relief in his voice around having uh, Dave Donachie and Ben Eichen on board to take away some of those roles that they, they're just so many and varied as a coach at, at certain clubs. Mm. Um, and the more good people you have around you to do – some of those roles in recruitment, development, whatever else, um, it just helps you to coach. Yeah, you're right. Just to coach. And uh, especially I'm when that's the case. Especially, Badge, when you're like a first-year coach, you feel as though you do have to take everything on because at the end of the day, you live and breathe by your results. And so you feel as though you've got to take control of every little department in the football operations. And the, the moment you're able to delegate those off, and allow someone who's got really good operational skills to, to worry about those. Mm. Well, you can just worry on worry about your relationship with the players. Um, important text here. Danger. G'day, mate. Welcome. Uh, good to talk to you this week. Uh, Woogie, you're so wrong. They're called mint muchia peas. No, they are mint peas, I think, aren't they? No. What's muchia? Um, not pea and ham soup peas. Wait, I'm wrong? He and, can't even spell wrong. And... Please don't pick on our list. Can't pick on and barbecue like sauce for me. Yep. Get well, his out. pie's good on you, Danger. He's yeah. spelt wrong. R O N G. Yes, and like and badge. You are happy with that? Like, if we put something wrong on the run sheet, you've got to fix it and reformat it. You're you're going to accept that from? You should know better, Woogie. <laughs> uh, Rugby League Commission oh. Chair Peter Volandis has confirmed. Players won't be asked to take further pay cuts um, as this uh, this lockdown, this extended stay in Queensland, 
uh, happens. Um, it's expected to cost the league at least, for the NRL, at least $40 million. Um, last year when the game shut down for a couple of months, players agreed to a 6% pay reduction. And that does that continues in 2021. Yeah, so the salary cuts year. down about $9 million. So yeah. that invariably comes off the players' bottom line as well. Yeah, and, everyone everyone copped it. Yeah, so, I mean, when he's saying further pay cuts, there are, there are many out there that believe that the – that the game who at the moment is in a very healthy financial position. Um, well, a good TV rights deal. Let's remember they got that in place last year, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Importantly, at, at, a, at a somewhat reduced rate. That was the Fox Sports one, wasn't thought. it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so many believe that the players, if the game wants to stay ahead, ahead of the curve, well, they need to take another pay cut. Well, the only reason the pay cuts were brought in last year is because the game was shut down for two months. So mm. it was shut down for two months. There's, there's no content, no content to no watch. Income. So, unfortunately, yeah, everyone has to suffer the consequences. We did as well as broadcasters. So, um, yeah, it's good to see the Peter Volandis is um, again. He's always since he's come in. He's, I think he's always been on the side of the players. Yeah, and yeah, many may say that's not the case when it comes to the the new rules. But I, I think he's always on the side of the player. I always believe that he tries to look at it from the the view of the players. We would have been happy with a six percent pay cut. <sighs> Wouldn't we? It would have been nice. Hmm? All right. Now, what do you make of this? Um, Parramatta are keen on Anthony Milford for the rest of 2021. Yeah, it's an interesting one, this one. I mean, every club thinks every every club thinks they can get the best out of a, a certain player. I mean, I've got no doubt there'd be coaches sitting back or recruitment officers sitting back saying, at least if we got Milford, we'd get the best out of him. Well, they know he's talented. There's no doubting his talent. Yeah. I don't know what his work ethic's like from his, tra- from his training work ethic. I don't know how hard he trains. I mean, the start of every year we always hear Anthony Milford's the fittest he's ever been. He's the lightest he's ever been. But his whole body image says to me that he – it looks to me that – Yeah, his body shape says to me that he doesn't train overly, overly hard when he comes into a season. And I think that fluctuates as the season plays on as well. So what role would he play? I'm not quite sure. Obviously a number 14. Back up off the bench, yeah. But they've got – yeah, they've got the – Ray Stone, who does a great job for them. Young Jacob Arthur, who played on the weekend. Mm. It, it might just be a bit of insurance for yeah, them if something happens. You, you do a run need into depth, the and it's only for the rest of the year. Yep. But um, look, if you can get, it the, could upset the get, apple cart with the players that have been there yeah. for one, two, three years and have been playing that role yeah. and and want to hey, look, play that role through finals. Someone's going to be upset if you, if you miss out and someone takes your place, especially if they come from the outside. Yeah, there'll, there'll probably be someone upset, but. Um, th- that's the sometimes that that's the price or the sacrifice the club needs to make for success. They want to win the competition, and they want to have you know the if this is, if he's available and they can afford him um, and get him cheap for the remaining games. I and it, they can fit him in their cap. I I can see why the, why mm. they do it. Who would be upset? Who would be who? who well, I, I think the conversations between son, Jacob Arthur and Brad wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. he might be the be man to cold. miss out. Mm. Yeah, so you know he he plays in the halves. You wouldn't put him in the in the middle of the field. You wouldn't put him in in the hooker position because, again, I don't think he has the the aerobic capacity to to play in the middle. You can play him at fullback if Clint Gutherson's ever injured. But like I said, I'm, I, you got to be very wary that there would be discussions being had amongst the coaching staff and the and the general manager of rugby league around does this affect our playing group if we bring a player an outsider mm. in so close to the finals. Talking about the Eels, um, their 18th man, this is the funny part too, funny of it, 18th man, Kane Evans had some uh, words oh, written. Oh, sorry, yeah. Warriors. Had mm. some words written on his um, uh, his yeah. wrist strapping, um, including the C word. Yep. Yeah. I, I know if he. What? <laughs> if he had, if he had, um, if he had his time over again, I think, um, I think he changed the wording. You know, it's interesting. I've been watching a lot of the feedback on social media with this on Twitter, and a lot of people are saying, you know what, cameras don't don't zoom in on it. If you see it, don't zoom in on it. Oh. Um, if that's what he needs is a simple message to trigger him to play well, well, you know, a simple message like, well, so be it. That's his way of – but we live in a world where there's so much exposure oh, yeah. in the game. Well, it was Matt, Matt Lodge seven years ago Yep, did this in under-20s and got two weeks. He did too, yeah. So – could cost him a little bit of time. Even um, if he wanted to write that, the C word, and he did a couple of asterisks like you see in the media, at least that message is still something that's pertinent to him. Um, our Sports Day player of the round, before we get to the break for expert car service you can rely on, visit repcoservice.com. I'll throw a couple insets. Um, Adam Dewey, Xavier Savage, 
Yep. Thought they were very good for their uh, respective team. I'll ask Ricky about Nico Xavier Hines Savage when we talk to him next. Ryan Madison, I thought, for Parramatta on Friday night was outstanding. Two try assists, one try, a uh, fair few offloads. And he had four offloads in the first half. Mm. Cody Walk was, in the end, he was the difference. He's great, isn't he? Hey, can I just say, can we, we're going to talk about in the hot topic, the most bizarre things you've seen on the on the sporting field. Lachlan Lewis and oh, yes. Cody Walker. Yes. <laughs> What's doing? What? Oh. Unfair on Cody. He wouldn't cost have said him. anything. To no, him. he's baited him. <laughs> he's no baited way. him beautifully. It's cost him cost him ten minutes, and well, that really hurt the ball. Nick dogs, from Newcastle it? said, "What the hell was Lachlan Lewis thinking? <laughs> that was weird, and probably cost them the game." Well, it was twenty four all at one stage. You could argue. You could argue mm. it did. All right, who you pick out of those for the player of the round? Uh, I'm going to say Adam Dewey because they came from behind. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Sports Day player of the round for Repco Servicing, your local mechanic, with the nationwide backing of Repco. Book online at Repco Service. Dot com. Uh, we're going to catch up with Ricky Stewart next. This is Sports Day for the Kia Sorento Drive Car of the Year. You're listening to Sports Day. Have your say by dropping badge and sats a tech.